This episode was made possible by Brilliant, the problem-solving website that helps you think like a scientist. Be one of the first 200 to sign up using the link below and get 20% off your premium subscription. By this point, it's safe to say no, we're probably not alone in the universe. The odds are just stacked so favorably for the existence of alien life that it seems impossible that we would be the one exception. Let's do some math. There are potentially half a trillion planets in the Milky Way alone. If just one in 10,000 of these planets could support life, that's still 50 million planets in our neighborhood that have had plenty of time for life to develop, considering many of them would have had a multi-million or even billion year head start. Of course, we haven't found any solid evidence of alien life yet, which is the basis for the Fermi Paradox. With so much potential for life in our galaxy alone, surely we would have seen something by now. The Fermi Paradox has many proposed solutions, including terrifying space phenomena like gamma ray bursts, which we've covered on this channel before. In this episode, we're going to work from the assumption that the universe is full of life, and consider some of the reasons we may not be able to find it. Starting with perhaps the most unlikely scenario, if many life-harboring planets had a multi-million year head start over Earth, we could be among the less developed intelligent species in the galaxy. If this is the case, perhaps the other, more intelligent life forms have all agreed not to interfere with our development, instead choosing to quietly observe from a distance. From an Earthling perspective, this would make sense, as it would likely be the path we would take if we discovered fledgling life on another planet. Studying from afar would give us valuable insights into the development of intelligent life, and it would be needlessly risky to interfere directly. This idea is called the zoo hypothesis, and it hinges on the fact that other intelligent life would be aware of our existence but unwilling to make their presence known for fear of disturbing our natural progress as a species. Alternatively, they may be completely willing to contact us, but communicate in a totally different way than we do, which means we wouldn't be able to identify their message as coming from an intelligent source even if we did receive it. Another, more likely reason we haven't found any cosmic neighbors is because we're simply not looking hard enough. Sure, we have some impressive space telescopes, but observing hundreds of billions of stars, each with potentially dozens of planets and moons, is hard work. And funding for projects aimed at finding intelligent life is incredibly low. When space science budgets get cut, the search for alien life is always the first thing on the chopping block. It's incredibly fascinating and could have far-reaching effects around the world if we found something, but it's just not practical. Looking for intelligent life beyond Earth is like trying to find a needle in a haystack, except the haystack is millions of miles across and the needle could be microscopic or hidden under 10 miles of ice. That's not hyperbole either. Some experts believe that we may not be able to find little green men because they're really, really little. When we think about extraterrestrials, we generally picture them as being roughly human size or larger. Perhaps this predisposition has kept us from considering that intelligent alien life could be microscopic. It sounds weird, but scientifically, there's nothing preventing intelligence from developing on a much smaller scale beyond Earth. The conditions on our planet led to humans being the size we are, but those conditions could be very different on other planets, still favorable enough to support intelligent life, just maybe not life as we know it. Another possibility that looks pretty promising right now is the fact that there are many ocean worlds covered in a thick layer of ice, but they have all the right ingredients to support complex life. Take Europa, for example. This moon of Jupiter is very similar to Earth in that it's thought to have a molten iron core, a rocky mantle, and a giant salty ocean. Constant hydrothermal activity on the seafloor heats the global ocean and provides nutrients to support life. Observe these hydrothermal vents on Earth and you'll always find swarms of living creatures. This makes Europa potentially the most promising place in the galaxy to look for life. The only problem is, there's a 10 to 15 mile layer of ice covering the entire ocean. This makes it exceptionally difficult to observe the conditions of the subsurface ocean in any detail. As far as we know, there could be entire nations of intelligent aquatic beings beneath the surface, living their lives completely unaware of the existence of anything beyond their watery domain. This poses a bit of a problem. If we want to really study this massive ocean, we'd need to land scientific instruments on the surface and start drilling. This could contaminate the moon with microscopic life from Earth, or conflict with the zoo hypothesis if we did find intelligent life. The question we need to ask in this scenario is, is it worth the risk? There's one more possibility worth mentioning, and it's one that often gets overlooked. We know that planets like Earth are good candidates for harboring life. We also know that Earth is part of the first 8% of Earth-like planets to form after the Big Bang. Assuming life can only exist on Earth-like planets, the odds are very good that humans are the first intelligent life in the universe, or at least one of very few examples. If this is the case, we have an incredibly important task. 
In order to protect what little life there is in the universe, we would have to ensure that we don't destroy ourselves on the path to greater things. We would need to overcome our destructive human nature and keep a watchful eye on the stars, to detect any fledgling civilizations that may begin to form. That being said, even if the galaxy is full of life, we may never find it, especially with our conventional technology. There are simply too many stars to observe carefully enough to determine if their planets and moons could support life. We're still not sure about whether or not Mars once hosted life, and it's one of our nearest neighbors which we can study relatively easily. Now imagine doing that for hundreds of billions of planets, all farther away than we could ever hope to reach in a hundred lifetimes. We know life is likely out there, but we'll probably never find it. The math just isn't on our side. To understand exactly why it's so unlikely we'll ever discover life beyond Earth, you need to have a good comprehension of the concepts we discussed in this video, mainly math and astronomy, which you can learn through Brilliant's excellent class, Worlds Beyond Earth. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that helps you think like a scientist and build a deeper understanding of complex topics. You can go from having no knowledge of the subject at all to being able to comprehend more advanced ideas than you would have ever thought possible, with Brilliant guiding you every step of the way with their easily digestible sections. As you progress through the classes, when you answer a question incorrectly, you can always correct your misunderstandings and get a solid grasp of each topic, because Brilliant will explain exactly why it's wrong. To support Second Thought and learn more about Brilliant and truly build your understanding, visit brilliant.org slash second thought and sign up for free. I use Brilliant myself and I can personally give it my highest recommendation, so be sure to check it out by following the link below.